so I mean, you know, and then I used to wear an elbow thing because I had an elbow problem for a little bit. And I just came off of surgery a year and a half ago. So and that's actually when I got released. I was still rehabbing my shoulder. I had a bicep uh, surgery and um, rotator cuff at the same time. Had Dr. Dugas in Alabama do it. He was one of the, one of the best in the world. And um, and then um, I was just about coming back to WrestleMania, which was in Tampa, in which I had just moved to Tampa from Houston. And, uh, and I got the call April 15th, you know, I was released. And it was like a bunch of us, like Tony Chimmel, John D'Amico, everybody with 38, 35 years. I've been with the company 35 years. Tony Chimmel was 38 years, D'Amico 32 years. And it was a guy, Mark Eaton, he just got released a few years back. You know, he was with the company 30 years for no apparent reason. Mm. Is, is it, um, well, actually, when you say no apparent reason, I mean, there's like a couple of theories going on around. And uh, uh, on one of your uh, ad-free shows, which is mm -hmm. a free plug, I'll be plugging all the videos and all the clips and everything like that with the ad-free shows and everything. Uh, you mentioned right. some yeah. geezer called uh, Mark Carano. Uh, may have had a hand yeah. in it. Was that is that just theory or? Uh, well, know? I mean, he was the head of town relations, but if he wanted to maybe budget his town his his town relations TR department, um, you know, I, that was the first one to cut maybe because I was maybe making too much more than anybody else, but rightfully so for being there for thirty five years and stuff. So, I mean, um, you know, it's just um, I don't think it was really had anything to do with budget cuts or anything like that. I just think it was just. They just released us. That was it. Mm. Well, it was Jerry Briscoe. He, he went to about the same time, didn't he? Yeah, and he went out at the same time. A lot of guys were going out at the same time. I mean, they just didn't want to resign Big Show. And then he goes to AEW. They didn't want to resign Brock Lesnar. They didn't want to resign Mark Henry. Um, and they didn't want to pay him. That's what I'm hearing. So they just didn't want to pay him. They're still releasing people mm. here and there. So trickling down. And there's rumors that they're, uh, they're going to sell the company to Disney. So in Orlando, so I mean, who better off to own the company but to Disney? You know, it's yeah. So if, that's if, That's exactly what I was going to ask you. Was uh, there was a long-standing theory going on that they're trying to keep the stock up, either so Vince McMahon can unload a load of stock or just get right. rid of the company to Viacom or Disney or whoever. Well, I think Disney would be the perfect company to buy them. I mean, they got the money. If they got eight billion dollars, eight point six billion, or and then where else, where else would you want to probably hold a Hall of Fame would be probably Disney. You know, I mean, Hall of Fame studio in Disney of wrestling from years and years and all the Hulk Hogan, the Rocks, the Andre, the Giants and Bruno San Martino's to everybody back in the day. You can hold a beautiful Hall of Fame and that would be the best place to have it. Disney. You know? Yeah. But it's Everybody a, from all over the world goes there. It's a flip of the coin, though, isn't it? Because they bought Star Wars. And on one hand, you've got The Mandalorian, which was great. Yeah. On the other hand, you've got Episode Nine, which was right. terrible. So it could go <laughs> either way. Right. I mean, Disney's owning everything right now. So yeah, in their hands on everything. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> I tell you what, sorry, I forgot to switch the camera. There. I'm actually switching the camera. Uh, I'm directing it myself at the same time. So I'm going back right. to uh, I'm going back to uh, my pre-prepared questions, and it's another obvious one. And then we'll get back to sort of the old school where I'm uh, way more familiar. Uh, yeah. AEW referee, uh, you did a few uh, a few shots yeah, for them, and then you sort yeah. of didn't go back. Uh, uh, what's the relationship yeah, like? Tony Khan, I don't know. Like um, Cody was high on me. A lot of guys were high on me there. I mean, it was just uh, to train the referees or help out as much as I can and do some matches. But, um, you know, like uh, I don't think uh, maybe Khan was interested in, in referees really or something like that. So it just, um, you know, went there probably just to add to the show for a few, few times. And uh, Cody, I appreciate him inviting me down and Chris Jericho, Y2J and, I'm, and, and Tony Khan. But uh, yeah, it just didn't work out. So I mean, it's you know, see what happens. You know, I mean, if if they do call when they go to two shows or something like that, because I know they're going to need more referees. So if the call's there, it's there. If it's not, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. But at least but, you can make money sat at home doing podcasts and stuff now as well, without all the hassle and travel yeah, in the COVID true. times. Yeah, that's true. It's true. Yeah, I had to make that tran transition in the podcast. So it's actually been pretty cool telling the stories. <laughs> 